Mark Woodford's partnership with Todd Woodbridge remains the most successful in tennis history. The Woodies, as they were affectionately known, won 61 ATP World Tour titles and a record 11 Grand Slams in nine years. We went on court with Mark to get an insight into what makes a doubles champion. The doubles is all about short points, uh, quick reflexes, moving forward. The best doubles teams are not the ones that just stay on the baseline and you know, just caress the ball nicely. It's the ones that sort of have that attacking instinct. For Todd and I, I think that's what we point towards our longevity, was that we weren't just about power. We moved the serve around and we were able to back it up with solid first volleys, uh, touch, finesse. We knew the angles. A couple of specific areas were, you know, return of serve. You know, again, getting that angle. All of a sudden, you know, in singles, you're playing the whole court. In doubles, it's only relative to, you know, basically cross court. Singles, you can get away with some big, powerful, you know, serves, cheap points. Yes, you can get away with that in doubles as well. But if you can position your serve, you've got to remember you've got a partner who's covering half the court. So if you can put your serve into a position, you've let your communicated that to your partner, I'm serving down the tee, then they can get involved in the point. Communication is key, even on the tour today. There's not, you know, some of them, they don't communicate in between points. When there are big moments in matches, I find it hard to believe that you can instinctually cover or know what your partner's gonna do. You've got to be comfortable out there. You've got to know how your partner's going to react under pressure, what their big weapons are, uh, what their weaknesses are, and you try and cover up those weaknesses. Doubles is all about positioning. You know, it's, it's communicating to each other, putting yourself in the right position, and then, of course, you've got to be able to execute, you know, the shots. Yes, you've got to be able to hit some shots here, but after you've hit a couple of good ones, the goal is to eventually get as close as possible to the net. Everything's happening in this direction on the doubles court, not back there. Here, if you reach this position and you announce yourself, then it's reaction. This is a transition point to moving in closer. Domination and winning takes place around here. You know, if you're gonna try and dominate here, you want to be able to cover your half of the court. So you've pretty much got to station yourself almost in the middle of the court. For Todd and I, after a number of years, we, we were aware of what was going to happen. I mean, you, you know, uh, um, some of the major finals, break points or um, serving for the match, I kind of knew what Todd was, how he was going to react, what he was trying to achieve. But that's because we, you know, spent some time together on the court in those situations often enough and we were awarded with uh, a number of victories. Inevitably, you know, I want any opponent to feel me, to feel Todd coming forward. They can't feel us if we're back here, but they can feel us and they can see us as we're looking to come forward. If you position yourself well, you give the impression that you're capable of making these volleys here or get back for the smash. But if you're sort of standing here, hoping that your partner's gonna cover three quarters of the court, it shows that you have a weakness, you're vulnerable. And so inevitably against the Woodies, you would get the ball straight at you. The bigger the point, the more chances that the person who stood in this part of the court was going to get a volley. It's like a drug, that winning feeling. You know, you don't ever want to lose that. And when you get accustomed to it, you kind of look down the other end and you can sense that the other team would be nervous. If you got to your strong position up at net, they were extremely yeah, vulnerable. So you know, it's not, it's not necessarily all just about what's happening up your end of the court. Take a look down there. At the start of our, of our partnership, sure, there were times when we made the finals, we were really nervous. Everyone gets nervous. But we just, again, built up that, that aura. If we're nervous, imagine what the other guys are. Having to play a major final and they're playing against the Woodies. If you want to be the best, it's connected with always wanting to win and expecting to win. And so that, uh, 
That aura is there with a, with a lot of great, great champions on the singles court as well as the doubles court. Next week on ATP World Tour Uncovered, a special report from the first of the ATP World Tour Masters 1000 events of 2010, Indian Wells. Now we speak to arguably the greatest tennis player of all time, the inimitable 16-time Grand Slam champion, Roger Federer. Until then, don't forget to log on to atpworldtour.com for your 24-7 breaking news. We'll see you next week.